I think we can all agree that Streamlit is an amazing framework. It is so flexible and you can build many different types of web apps with it. So in this video, I want to share with you my nine most favorite Streamlit components. Number one for me is the columns component. The reason that I like that one is I like using space a bit more efficiently. Uh, and with columns, you can put things side by side rather than one after another on the screen. Yes, one nice thing about the columns component is that you can decide their relative sizes. So if you just want to have two columns, you can type two uh, when, you're calling to uh, when you're calling the columns component and then it will create two columns of the same size. But if you need them to be a little bit different than each other, you can say the first one will have the size ratio of one, the second one two, and the last one one. So what it will do is to create first column uh, half the size as the middle column and the last column also half the size as the middle column. And we will see how that looks in a second also. So, and it's very easy to assign it to some variables. So this is the first thing that I really enjoy when I'm using Streamlit. Of course, we will not see anything if we run this application right now, it's just three columns. So let me populate this with some of my other favorite components so then we can see how it looks. The second one that I really enjoy is Markdown. And the reason I like using Markdown is because I'm kind of used to uh, writing a text in Markdown format. For example, when I'm preparing some documentation on GitHub, uh, that's why I kind of like creating headlines or lists etc when I, in my application so it's very easy again you can call streamlit markdown and if you want to have a heading you can just type it with uh, one hashtag or I don't really know what else it's called um, let's say you know we can say welcome to my to my app and I can change that later if you if I want to have more in there, I can also say here is some info on the app. All right, so uh, let me put this actually in the column, the first column, so that we can see what that looks like. Yeah, so as you can see, this is my first column. Here will be my second column, and the last column will also be as big as the first column. Next one I really like is the file uploader. And the reason that I like this one is because sometimes you really need to communicate with the user, and it is not enough to only have um, you know, some text input or some other types of input, but you need something a bit more sophisticated. And when you have people upload a file, it could be anything. For example, if you're doing a data science project, they can even upload a whole new data set. So that's why I really like the file uploader component of Streamlit. Uh, let me put this in the second column. In this one, I will ask people to um, do a photo upload upload a photo and you can easily also save it into a variable when uh, a photo or a file is uploaded so I will just say uploaded photo for this one and let's see how that looks yeah as you can see you know we need a bit more space for this one that's why I made the column a little bit bigger but if you want to upload something you just say browse files and then automatically upload it next thing that I really like again I will put it in a second column is the camera input so instead of writing a text or uploading a photo you can also automatically grab photos from the webcam that you have which is, in my opinion, really useful sometimes, especially if you are making a project, a web app that has something to do with computer vision, that could be a very fun application, could be a very fun way of making your web app a bit more interactive. And again, we need to tell people what to do. You can say, take a photo. And again, you can save the photo that is taken um, into a variable. So I'll just call this camera photo. Let's see what that looks like. Of course, you need to then give permission for the streaming application to access your camera. And hey, that's me. Hello. <laughs> and you can take a photo and then it will just show your photo here and then the photo will be saved into this variable that you defined. Next thing that I really like is when you have someone do something on your app, if it's an interactive application, then it is very nice to show them some feedback if something failed or not. And Streamlit already has built-in components or boxes for, for to do this. So for example, if you want people to take a photo and then you want something to happen, 
you know, if that thing happens and you show a result, people might not really understand that something happened in the background. So it's always a good idea to give them a little bit of a feedback. So one thing you can do, again, let's say it's about uploading a photo or taking a photo, um, you can say, you can use a success box and give them a message. For example, photo uploaded successfully. And here now we can see that for shows me that photo uploaded successfully. Of course, you can uh, have a little condition here that says show this only if the photo is uploaded or a new photo is being taken, but we'll do that in a second. Uh, but for now, as you can see, it's nice to show something with a little green background that tells the user that everything went well. And sometimes you might need to show people that something is working in the background or maybe like a little progress bar to show them, hey, we're working on this and we will get back to you in a second. So maybe it's after uploading a photo or uploading a file maybe if it's too big, it's taking a little bit of time. So what you can do is to show this progress bar and that is also built in in Streamlit and I, I really, really like it. One really easy way to do it, let's say I'll put it in the second column again, I'll call progress component from Streamlit and at first it's going to be zero and then inside a for loop, um, percent completed. I can increase it a little bit. So for example, first I need to give this a name, um, progress bar. And then I will inc increase this uh, incrementally. If you don't want it to happen really fast, of course, you can also add some sleeping time in here. Just need to call the time. Uh, module and yeah this will work so it will basically look like it's slowly being uploaded so let's see how that looks oh I forgot to give sleep some um, let's say 0 0.5 let's not wait too long <laughs> oh turns out that this is taking a long 0 0.05 maybe I'll rerun this and yeah, as you can see now we have a nice little smooth uh, progress bar and once it's done, it will give me a success message. The next thing that I really like is how you can show some of the metrics on Streamlit applications. They have a really nice little neat way of showing them. For example, if I want to add this to column three, um, we'll just call metric. I need to give it a label. Let's say I want to show the temperature. and the value of it is 60 degrees Celsius. And let's say there is also a delta to it, a change to it, and that is three degrees Celsius. So we'll see how nice that looks if we rerun this. Yeah, as you can see, it is very nice. Then we can show the delta in a neat way. And if it's positive, it shows as green. If it's negative, it shows as uh, red. So that's a nice way of showing things without you having to um, format everything from scratch, having this a little bit bigger, having this a bit smaller, have a different color or add a little icon here. So that's quite neat. Another thing that I really enjoy is expanders in Streamlit because it really saves from time uh, a lot. You don't, if you have a lot of text, you don't have to show the text uh, in one place. You can just divide it into expanders and people can uh, click them if they want to read more about a certain topic. So I will just add that separately. Uh, I will say with Streamlit expander and the nice thing is it's very neatly organized that's what I like so you put the title of the expander here inside the expander component so you can say click to read uh, more for example and then you can add whatever you want in there that's the nice thing uh, what should I say hello here are more details on this topic that you were interested in. You can add other things, you can add lists, or you can even add some of the images. So we can put the image that we just uh, taken, for example, camera photo. Oops. Uh, but that might give me an error. 
but maybe we can say if uploaded photo is none, then we show the camera photo. So we'll see if the user will do one thing. Else we'll show the other photo, the uploaded photo. This is assuming, I haven't written that in, but this is assuming that you know we have uh, one photo or the other photo uploaded already. So let's see how that looks. All right, click to read more and then it opens up and then we can read more and then we also have our nice little image here. And the last thing that I really enjoy with Streamlit is the session states and the callback function. So that's why I wasn't sure if it was nine or 10. If you call, if you think of them as one thing, it's nine, but if you think of them as separate things, it's 10. But basically session states and callback functions make Streamlit applications much, much, much better, much easier to use and opens up so many possibilities for us. So for example, if I want to keep track of if a photo has been uploaded or not, uh, what I can do is to have a photo uh, session state, basically. So I'll say a photo not in Streamlit session state. Streamlit session state photo and at first this is how it's going to be initialized of course it's going to be well to say not done and what I can do is to have a callback function and inside this function I'm going to change the session state uh, when a photo is either uploaded or a photo has been taken so I will say change photo state and then in here I'm going to change the state to done and to have this any effect have this have any effect I need to call on change so if something happens here I will call change photo state callback function here and here and then I can also say you know we've been showing the progress and the percentage completed everything everything so maybe I can say if uh, not this Streamlit session state is done, then do all of these things. If not, then don't do anything. So let's see how that's going to look. All right, I'll rerun my application. All right, so right now nothing is happening. It just says, welcome to my app. Here's some info on the app, whatever. We can add whatever we want there. If I upload something, um, let's say one of my photos, it will break because I accidentally called <laughs> strings here and not the function name. Sorry. Let's start this again. As I said, nothing is happening now. I will just upload a photo here and then we see the progress bar and then it will show me a success message. And we will also be able to see the temperature. Then we see this here. And then we see the uploaded image. So yeah, that's how session states and callback functions help us. And yeah, this has been nine or 10, depends on how you look at it, uh, of my favorite Streamlit components. I hope this helped to give you some of the inspiration that I've got with Streamlit. They have so many different types of components, so many things you can do with them. Uh, and it would really depend on the kind of project that you're working on. But I've also found that the components themselves sometimes give me inspiration for a whole new uh, project that you can make a interactive web application on. Um, so I hope you liked it. If you have any questions about any of the components, let me know. Or if you want to learn more about the components that I talked about here, again, let me know. I can make a video separately uh, on them in the future. Have a great day for now and I will see you in the next video.